welcome to Director's Notes. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. Good. So we, you know, it's lovely to be able to speak to you because we featured Night of Fortune in our top 10 to see from Holly Shorts. Okay, nice. Yeah. So then when it came up, I was like, great, now we've got a chance to really dig in. Yeah, 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 for sure. So so you, so, so you were, it was on your top, top 10 on the Holly Shorts? Yeah, so yeah. we cover lots of different film festivals here at Director's yeah. Notes. And um, we like, you know, watch all the shorts. And then, um, so it wasn't me who wrote it, but another one of our writers. So Night of Fortune was on, on the top 10 to watch from there. Okay, nice. So you predicted it to be Oscar nominated also? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. We, yeah, we yeah. Fortune tellers, we're everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we sort of sense that. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, tell me a bit about your film. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean it's a, it's a story about the main character Carl that comes to the morgue um, to see his uh, deceased wife uh, for the first time, and he can't really cope with that. Um, he can't really get himself to open uh, the coffin and accept her death, um, so he's sort of in this denial state. Um, so instead, he diverts himself by fixing a lamp. <laughs> Um, and and telling himself uh, that she's not dead, and then he flees to the restroom where he meets uh, Torben, uh, the other character in 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 the in the film, and they the the two of them sort of sort uh, sort of um, how do you say it uh, form a kind of uh, friendly relationship between uh, each other, yeah, and that becomes sort of the the heart of the story, right? So it goes from loneliness to 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 a friendship yeah that that was one thing i really enjoyed <clears throat> you know it's obviously you're looking at grief you're looking at loneliness they're big topics but i don't know central it's kind of like this little buddy film about yeah. their friendship and that's yeah. beautiful thank you i mean i know i've read that you know the film and the writing comes from a personal place yeah was it cathartic did you find it difficult in the writing process Absolutely. Yeah. It was cathartic, but also it's it's so hard to write grief because, you know, it's so it's such a, a such a sensitive uh, subject. Um, and, you, and, you know, it's it's hard not to step on any toes or step on people's emotions or, or feelings. Mm -hmm. That was that, that that sort of made me afraid of writing it in the beginning because, oh, I'm, am I going to hurt people here or I'm going to hurt these people's feelings when, you know, I, I mix um uh, comic elements into it but it, it was also you know the the comedian part it's also a part of of griefing right so you know it's it's quite natural often when you if you have lost someone you tell a story maybe about him or her and you start laughing and then for two or three seconds you sort of you you feel relief right and you forget about the pain uh, so so that's also why it was quite a natural part but there was to, to me in the beginning that was that was sort of finding the right balance between the humor and and the, and the drama in it and so yeah it was it was it was quite tough to write and it took me some time for sure yeah um but I think I got there in the end <laughs> I I mean I think so I <laughs> I like to go into films not knowing anything about them yeah when I watch them so <laughs> I wasn't expecting to find your film so funny, but you know, no. it's always a good sign when you're watching it, you know, on your own in front yeah. of your laptop. And I was laughing like out loud. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that because it is it is dark comedy, right? And also, yeah. when we had the first with we had the first screening, um, one or two people came over to me. They were laughing, but they came over to me afterwards and they said we didn't really know if we were allowed to laugh, right? Because that was, that was the balance. Then we created this um, this soundtrack for it in the beginning that that's sort of more warm and have, has hope in it, so it's not too church like or cold uh, or mel melancholic. So so we sort of try to tell the audience that it's okay to laugh here, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I think <laughs> you, you you give your audience permission to laugh. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's a beautiful thing because, and like you said, you know, part of grief and life and loss. There, there's got to be comedy in there, and yeah. the situation where they're in there with this other family, it's brilliant. Yeah. You know, everyone's sort of standing there looking around. It's really clever. Thank you. 
that that actually came from that idea with with uh, the the other family that it was it was an old note I'd written down. I had an idea for for a guy guy coming to uh, uh, attending the, the wrong funeral. So and back then I was I, I don't I have I haven't really felt loss yet. I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm I'm allowed to write this. So so it was just a note I, I wrote down five uh, five to ten years ago, uh, ten years ago I think actually, and then then it sort of as as I was writing this, it's like, oh I gotta use this. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> That's amazing. Is it, yeah. I mean, it so in a different so way, but you know, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So one of the things I really loved and sort of watching it repeatedly, you've got great framing in there. Yeah. So I love the first bit when he walks into the room and, you know, the coffin's there and then he's staring at the light and you've just yeah. got him, whatever. And that's sort of reflected quite a lot throughout the film. Can yeah. you talk to us about planning your shots? Yeah. First of all, I'd, I'd like to credit Les uh, Talbot, who was who the DOP um, on the film. We ha we had a we have a nice relation relationship and we quite we understand each other and he's 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 so talented but first of all we wanted to make um the environment environment this cold uh bluish uh giving this vibe that the only warmth had to come from the people there um so that was sort of the vibe and and the lighting had to come from up top so it would sort of create these shadows uh in their eyes almost like they're dead <laughs> so but still alive so that, that that was this play between life and death uh, also in the picture and also the the, the framing you, i think you mean with the coffin in the foreground yeah. and the and he's standing up and the lamp is up here is for me it's almost like a jesus <laughs> jesus shot he's standing here like it felt almost yeah. religious yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah um but also that's sort of this <laughs> this connection between the lamb and the coffin right <laughs> and the, and he destroys the lamb yeah <laughs> yeah um yeah <clears throat> so we did a of course we did a lot of work at at finding the right right frames for, uh, for it and also had to we also wanted to create this claustrophobic vibe also when when they in the end they get outside uh, it had to feel like a relief um also at some sometimes in the in the film you sort of feel like you're in a um a little uh, pocket of time in, in some way right and you when you get outside you you suddenly realize oh there's still the reality there's still the cars passing by be, behind them right um so that was that was very important to us that it sort of felt very claustrophobic yeah um <clears throat> and actually one, one of the yeah and I don't know if you noticed the, the the door thing with the little hole in it yeah that was actually something we discovered when we when we found the the, the location um and I was like oh shit we we have to use this because <laughs> uh, it, it it wasn't written in the script before but so so sometimes you get these um accidental um reliefs or uh, yeah, so uh, so I we we I wrote it into into the script um, between the two that he closes this little uh, door between them uh, instead of just having a dialogue, which is which was what what it was uh, in the start. So yeah, that's great. That's a it's a funny little moment. It's like yeah no. yeah yeah <laughs> it is yeah <laughs> it's really a show don't tell right. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yeah. How did you find the right setting? You know, was it easy? Oh, was it a working? No, it, was, it really wasn't easy because we were looking at at morgues or um, yeah, at morgues in the beginning. And it's it's quite hard to use because they all they, all of them are in use, right? <laughs> so uh, I imagine. So it was so difficult. So can we borrow this for five days? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's uh, it was. Uh, um, it was impossible. So we actually found an abandoned uh, hospital. Um, <clears throat> and then we started painting it and uh, sort of doing a lot of set design in it. Um, so the long hallway and we, we only we only needed two rooms in the hallway, right? So 
we just started creating that um and we we had the place all uh, all to ourselves so so that was that was nice but it took some time to find the the right place that's a we had i think we were looking at some other other places but they were too too white or too narrow or, or yeah so i i think we we found the the perfect place actually a, a little uh, hit, hidden pearl that hadn't been used before because <laughs> yeah. it's it's got to be like that you're talking about that claustrophobia yeah. and tightness and you do get yeah. that in there it's brilliant thank you so you know there's part of the film which i'm sure I can't really get my head around, but I wanted to speak to you. So you've got the kind of Swedish Danish. Yeah. What's the significance of that? How does it play into the story? So actually, <clears throat> he's using, um, he's talking Danish Swedish actually, and he is a Swedish actor. Okay. And it um, actually in the beginning, I was looking <clears throat> for. Um, for a Danish actor, but uh, but I just couldn't find the right right one. Uh, I couldn't find one that was going to dedicate himself to the project. So I'd worked I'd worked with uh, Life Andre uh, before. It's the name of the the main character, Carl, and um, and it, it was actually my producer who said to me, "Let's try to send the script to to Life." So uh, we sent the script to Life, and he uh, read the script and he called me back. And he was almost <laughs> crying in in the phone, saying, "I want to do this. This is just me. I've just been through something similar, and every time I've read it, I've cried." Yeah. So that was just uh, brilliant, and and life is just uh, such an amazing actor. So we got him on board, and I actually rewrote the script a little bit, so it was um, Swedish Danish, <laughs> and it actually played quite well into this. Um, loneliness theme because he's now a, a Swedish man in Denmark. Um, he's lost his wife, and wives are often those uh, who keep the social network uh, in balance. Uh, so that would mean he would be uh, even more fish out of water or even more uh, alone. So that was actually it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it works really well and I sort of you know I couldn't really understand the language but the bit where he's in the toilet and he's like do mm. you say that does that make sense yeah 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 and, and I, 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 would, I would guess that Swedish and Danish sounds very similar similar to you they or? do I can yeah. sort of tell there's a difference but yeah, yeah they do sound really similar yeah <clears throat> yeah so you, you can understand if you're living in Denmark you can understand and understand Swedish and the other way around. So, but there's still a, a a little bit difference in it. So, yeah. Um, I love. I mean, you're talking about the two actors. They're they're really unlikely protagonists. Yeah. <clears throat> like you don't often find these two sort of older, quite sour, just a bit disenfranchised men. Were you always imagining to be them to be that way? <clears throat> Yeah, I think so. I want I wanted it to, I wanted them to feel very old. I wanted everything to move very slow and everything to be kept very um what do you say? We say underspilled, underplayed in 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 Danish, so not too theatrical. Um okay, like quite flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um and I actually the Torben character um uh, he's called Jens Jørgen in, in, in Danish. When I was writing it, I was actually imagining him playing it, but I didn't think he would have the time because he's a very busy uh, Danish actor. Um, <clears throat> so we contacted the agent and we actually had some, uh, we asked about other actors, uh, but they weren't, weren't I, I, I wasn't really feeling them. So um, suddenly the agent called back and he, he and and she said that in jargon ha, has time now and um, he would like to read the script so we read the script and uh, he returned to me um, and uh, i was I, I knew i wanted an actor that could sing in the end that was very important to me so i'd asked him if he could sing <laughs> and then he sang the song to me and i was i was so moved and i was just it's got to be you yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was just yeah. 
they play brilliantly with each other. Mm. One of my favorite bits is so when they're over the coffin, you've kind of got the shot, reverse shot of yeah. he's like starting to read his list. <laughs> yeah. That's just brilliant, and the bounce yeah. between yeah. them. I also got to also got to pay some credit to to my to my editor Simon. We also uh, we sat in the cave for a long time editing, and he's also a great editor. And 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 it's that scene is perfectly edited between those two, right? Also, yeah, but. Great, great uh, actors, uh, and um, Jens Jørgen is just a perfectionist. You know, uh, we were talking um, a long time together before we were shooting, and <clears throat> talking about how he was gonna say the lines, or can we, can we just scratch some of these lines? He, he was, he would call me up and say, "Let's say, um, I don't, think, I don't think I have to say this. I can show it." <laughs> you know, and sometimes you have, you, you end up writing too much down right as a as a as a script writer because you need to tell everything but it's so it's so amazing when you work with great actors and they could just show it and they had a perfect connection between each other and these silences they have between each other right just staring at each other trying to read each other that's that's just amazing to me so that was a, a brilliant chemistry between those two guys <clears throat> yeah those silences are huge because yeah they're, they're serious and it's that friendship that's building but they're also they're funny yeah yeah exactly as yeah. also sometimes when i when i watch the film now is i have some points you know i would like uh, i'll squeeze them a little bit longer you know when you watch a film again you know, some changes you would like to do and but i know it's i, I think we found a, a pretty nice balance we, we didn't want to make the film too too long either it's a, it's a short film but sometimes I, I just like these silences uh these pauses um uh the they they're great comedy to me so yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned the editing was it was it quite quick because the performances were so strong yeah it was it was actually quite quick um i think we spent about a month we had we'd set up a a, a deadline to ourselves um and we had to f follow that um i think we used about a month um in the editing editing room and then i think me and simon we, we would have lo loved to maybe continue a little bit right but uh our producer said uh we ha we got to we got to get it out now <laughs> because you can just sit and um you know uh fuck up the details all the time <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, know, yeah. you can keep so. on you can keep on yeah <clears throat> um, and editing as well it's such an interesting process because often it yeah. can change some things of the film yeah yeah, yeah. um it, it definitely can and also finding the right pacing in this film because you know there are so long breaks and it's it is often these two guys standing in front of each other talking right so really need to really needed to find the the right pacing and then um, yeah i'm glad you 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 liked it yeah yes, no that comes across and the score, the music, was that made before the edit? No, that was that was actually made. We were working on the score, but um, we were working quite a long time. Also, while we were editing, we were working on the score, and then in the beginning, it was a, a bit more melancholic, I think, um, but it didn't quite feel right. Um, also, like I said, we want to as as we progressed in the editing we we found out that we need to make a score that has more warmth or more um, hope in it uh, also maybe a little comedian flavor uh, in in a delicate way so um it's it actually i think we finished the score almost uh, as we finished uh, the editing actually so um yeah <laughs> so they, they sort of built together yeah. yeah yeah so i mean obviously your oscar nomination congratulations thank you so much do you think do you think that this film has just really spoken to people the themes within um i know that now we travel around the world on different festivals and it's quite amazing that people have reacted almost uh, the same way in the cinemas laughing crying um it's it's um it's a universal theme grief i think so people it speaks to people all around the globe 
And um, that's been quite amazing to me because we were fearing in the beginning that, you know, it's, is this Scandinavian dark comedy? Is it too much <laughs> also for the U S but the U S lo loved it really. Yeah. And it's, it, it was amazing the first time when it, I think we were at the Clermont Ferrat in, in France also. And we, we were watching it in a cinema with 1400 people. And in the beginning I was, just sitting in the seat you know looking down i was so nervous <laughs> you know are people are gonna laugh right and when you have the first laugh and then the whole crowd sort of <laughs> gets in, everyone understands yeah yeah it's uh that's that's amazing um so it yeah it's uh it's been uh quite quite crazy um how people have reacted uh, to it um so I think this um, this this theme is very universal, um, and also the humor, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. mean, obviously, as a Brit, we understand that drama. Yeah, you understand it, of course. Oh, yeah. yeah, that that's yeah. very much in tune. I think we inherited Nordic, from you. <laughs> yeah, the Nordic and the British sense of humor. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, it's interesting as well that it just resonates universally. Yeah. I mean, that's that's testament to to the writing and everything. So again, congratulations. Thank you so much. So, what are you working on next? Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I've been working on a on a feature film, but it's paused right now because right now I'm getting uh, uh, offers from different places. <laughs> you know, when you get a uh, get an uh, Oscar nomination, you you get kind of hot. Suddenly, <laughs> you're very popular. Sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So and right now I don't really have the time because I'm using all the all my all my spare time on um yeah doing interviews and uh, traveling around promoting uh, the the film and as uh, we are gonna do also in the start of February we're gonna go to the US and promoting um so I think I'm gonna spend a lot of time on that <laughs> but uh, but I have a, a feature film I'm working on um uh, right now but. As I said, it's it's a little bit pause right now. <laughs> well, I mean, good luck with everything. Good luck with the tour. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for talking to us. Yeah, yeah. Welcome and thank you for letting me let me be part of your show. <laughs> <laughs>